Hey folks, welcome in a special Seven Rivers Racing here in KQEG TV. I'm Dan Dyker along with Al Losey. You know, last year uh, we decided to film a series of programs uh, just in case we rained out at the racetrack. There's really not much to talk about in right. the opening segments for the next couple of race shows. And it was one of the, uh, the most watched, not only on KQEG TV, but on the Seven Rivers Racing on our YouTube channel as well that our producer Jesse puts up. And uh, we aired it a couple of times last year. Uh, matter of fact, um, this season we even aired it once when we had a driver that was under the weather, uh, couldn't show up for the right. taping. And again, we're getting some emails on some of the history of racing, not only at the Lacrosse Fairground Speedway, but pretty much here in western Wisconsin. So we've okay. decided to do it again, uh, except this time instead of the video, we're going to have some still shots so you get some really good looks at some of the history of racing okay. here in western Wisconsin. And Dale Danielski from Starmaker Multimedia joining us in the program. And one thing you and I were talking when we were getting ready to, to bring Dale in is last year, here in the studio, we've got three different cameras. We have a right. monitor in front of us. Yes. And from time to time, as we got to critiquing, looking <laughs> back on the show, some of the video that Dale, that you brought in, was so fascinating that I had people saying, that, that are even in the same game you are saying, now where did he get video of this yeah. at? <laughs> that there were times that Al and I would catch ourselves staring at the monitor, not, not paying attention, video. Not paying attention to what was going on. Yeah, it was very interesting. I'm excited to do this again because he's got some outstanding information, outstanding pictures that people just don't have. And we've always wondered where he gets this stuff. But really, he has so many connections. And I'm not going to say old connections, but let's just say he's got some connections that go back a long way. People don't realize it, and maybe from the last show, he's actually been in race cars and raced against a lot of these guys. Right. Uh, back in the old days, and he, he'd race uh, uh, lacrosse, I believe Marshfield, uh, and a few of the other racetracks. Um, it may not have been for, for a lot of years like other people, but he got to know these people uh, on a on a day-to-day -day basis, or a week-to-week -week basis, and it really gave him an insight that he just kept his love going for it. Well, Dale, a lot of folks <clears throat> that are in the industry you are, uh, that are history buffs, uh, have congratulated you over and over every time that they've seen this show. Uh, from the video from last year. Good to have you back on the program. Well, it's it's good to be here, and I, I'm truly flattered by all that. Uh, although it's, uh, you know, I'm really the history really isn't about me, but I guess right. I'm one of those guys that that documented it. Which uh, you know, as it turns out now, it's uh, people really enjoy it, and I do too. I really do too. I think one of the neatest things was we had some clips. Um, the, the, the Lacrosse Speedway does this every now and then on on their Facebook. They'll put up pictures from back in the day, one of those old style billboards at the racetrack, and there were no walls, and, and guess who these drivers are, and it's pretty much what you were doing on video. But I've heard since we did that show last year from a lot of drivers that said, I was in that race. <laughs> you know, there was some video you were showing the Devil's Bowl, I met two gentlemen that were in that race, and they said, oh my goodness, that's me. <laughs> so we were maybe highlighting one driver, but, right. but the ones that were coming on a turn four behind him, that was me, and gave me the whole history of what that day was like. So yep. not only did you uh, bring a lot out to our, our fans of the TV show, but drivers that did it back in the day were like, that was me, and they thought it was really neat. Yeah, and I, you know, and it's, the history is great. I mean, and, and again, it, there's so many of these guys that did race back in the day and it's just difficult to identify so I'm glad to hear that some are are coming forward and saying hey you know we remember that and we were there it's right. uh, it, it's just it's interesting it was an interesting time and well, you, you know, the other thing I like about it as well is you, you have your big names in this area you've got your Marzovkas and you've got your Carlsons and you've got your Shears taking nothing away from them right. but it's the other drivers that never got the recognition because they weren't as good uh, or went on to go as far as a Matt Kenseth did. And that's why we wanted to bring you back in again to kind of revisit what we did last year, but this time in, in a more picture form so people have a better chance of really looking at what we've got. Sure, and uh, you know really, Lacrosse Interstate slash Fairgrounds uh, from day one when it was built back in the 50s has been an attraction and it really did focus on bringing in the top the top drivers of the time, and uh, it, it continues that way. Uh, 
I mean, many, many, and I don't, have, you know, we've got a partial list here really of those, but many, many have passed through that gate and gone on to bigger and better things. And it really started back, uh, like I say, when the track was first built in dirt. You had your early stars, Ernie Durr, Ramo Stott, Dick Hutcherson, Don White. Uh, IMCA was the big sanctioning body. USAC became a big sanctioning body. And these guys raced here. And they went on to win championships in these, uh, with these sanctioning bodies. So, and these were, some of them were open wheel uh, vehicles. That they yes, were yes, matter of fact, uh, uh, A.J. Shepard, uh, uh, Todd, uh, just all kinds of different drivers uh, did did race out at the speedway in the open wheel type cars, and it ended up being to some extent an avenue to, uh, toward the brickyard, toward getting into the Indianapolis 500. Uh, A.J. Shepard, Jim Hurtabees, Johnny Rutherford, Jim McElreath, Parnelli Jones, A.J. Foyt. They competed out here, and obviously we know some of those names to where they ended up. <laughs> well, sure. Well, that was like, you know, the story I had back in the 70s is my uh, aunt and uncle owned an interest in Road America. And I remember back in the day, and we're talking back in the 70s, that um, the Andrettis and the Foyts would pay me. Now, back in the 70s, a dollar was quite a bit of money, but I was in their hair so much as they're doing set up on the track, they would pay me to sweep off the track. Well, if you know Road America, it doesn't take 10 <laughs> minutes to do that track. I was gone for four or five hours, and I suckered myself into that deal a couple of times, come back sunburned, parents didn't know where I was, but I had a dollar to show for it. So yeah. you see the names that, that made their presence known in here in western Wisconsin, uh, Road America. I mean, they were always uh, with, with some of the... Uh, the open wheel cars uh, loved going to Road America back in the day, and, and now it's being brought back in with the Nationwide Series. Dale Danielski is with us. He's with Starmaker Multimedia. When we come back, sit down and just watch, because we're going to bring you the history of racing in Western Wisconsin, and we're going to do it uh, very slowly so you get a good chance to see uh, what the days were like here in this area. I'm Dan Dyker, now Wilson, Dan, 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 Dale, Dale Danielski. We'll be right back on Seven Rivers Racing.